In this short tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can make high pass sharpening a lot more intelligent. Hi there, Michael Volshinovich here from Vibrant Shot. You can find me on Facebook at facebook.com slash vibrantshot and also at vibrantshot.com. So in this video, I'm going to be showing you an alternative approach to high pass sharpening that's a little bit more intelligent and essentially gets us around some of the problems created by high pass sharpening. So we're going to use this image that I shot as an example. It's a thir uh, full 36 megapixel image. So um, let's start off with the standard high pass approach. So essentially we're going to duplicate our layer. We're going to adjust the contrast here. And now we're going to apply our high pass sharpening. So with high pass, pretty straightforward, we just have a radius value and that radius value essentially determines how much we're going to sharpen our image. So as we kind of crank up this radius, we can see some of the problems that are being created by the high pass, which is primarily around the periphery of our subject here where we have this really ugly halo happening. And um, some of these same problems exist on the inside, but you can really kind of see it around the edges here. That just looks terrible. So let's say we pick a radius of around 10 pixels and we blend our layer with overlay. As you can see here, it's done a pretty good job of sharpening, you know, all the texture and detail in the skin. But at the same time, if we toggle this on and off, you can actually see the fringe that is created uh, around the hair here and around the arm here. And that obviously doesn't look too good. And if we zoom into, let's say 50%, Again, you know, the skin texture really comes out, but all of these areas between the eye here and this highlight on the eye just really looks nasty and crunchy and, you know, just not very appealing. Now, obviously, we have way too much sharpening here. I would take this opacity way down, but I'm just using this to kind of show you some of the issues that this creates. You know, while the level of sharpening on the skin is still too high, but it's, it's not too bad, uh, in areas like this, it just really does a pretty miserable job of sharpening our image. So let's look at a way that gets us around that. So let's delete our layer here. And as you may already know, the preferred way of high pass sharpening is to actually use the apply image technique that you would use when doing frequency separation. So we're going to do something very similar to that, but we're going to do it in a different way. So again, we're going to just name our two layers high and low. I created two copies of whatever layer I want to sharpen. So just hit command or control J twice. And now we can disable our high layer and select our low layer. Now, if this is already starting to look like a lot of steps for you, it's a fair number of steps, but luckily for you, I've created an action that will automate all of this for you. So I'm really just showing you this so you understand how it works. So the first thing we're going to do is go into filter, blur, surface blur. And then from here, we need to pick the appropriate radius and threshold. So basically the threshold works kind of like the threshold in the unsharp mask option. And you're probably thinking, why not just use unsharp mask in that case? Uh, I promise you the results are different. So try it out for yourself and you will see. Uh, so let's just uh, grab a threshold here where we're not, uh, we're not actually blurring the image between the areas of transition that we don't want to sharpen. So, uh, you know, if we kind of go up here to 60, as we can see here, it starts to blur out this area uh, between the shoulder and background. So we don't want that. So we keep going down until we find a threshold that looks good. So in this case, I think I found it to be around 14, 15 or so. And then the radius that you apply here is going to dictate how much sharpening you're going to do. So the, the lower the radius, the less sharpening, the higher the radius, the more sharpening. And so if we go up here to like 49, you can see it's smoothing out the skin a lot more. And then somewhere around 70, you know, it's doing a little bit more, but at certain points, it actually kind of cuts off because this threshold acts as a bit of a throttle as well. So don't pick anything too high because it just doesn't really help us. So in this case, I, I'm really just looking for a radius that's going to blur out the texture in the skin because that's really what I want to sharpen back because I want to just bring back some of the detail. So at 28 and 14, that looks like it's pretty good. We're going to click OK there and it's going to apply my surface blur. Now, um, if you're doing the surface blur, I highly recommend you, you do it at the output stage. Maybe if you're using 16-bit, um, create an 8-bit output image and then sharpen on that because with 16-bit, surface blur is just painfully slow. So uh, try, try to avoid it on a 16-bit image. So now we have our blurred base layer, and we're going to select our hide layer. We're going to turn it on and go into image, apply image. Again, don't worry if any of this is confusing. This is really just to show you how this happens, but the action just takes care of all this for you. So it is different values depending on if you're in 8-bit or 16-bit. Again, I have two actions, one for 8-bit, one for 16-bit. But the idea is we have to select our low layer, 
select subtract as our blending mode, scale of 2, offset 128, and it's not inverted. So when I click OK there, we're going to essentially just delete this low layer because we don't need it anymore. And as you can see, this is our actual sharpening layer. So if we uh, just zoom in here, we can see that there isn't any of this fringing that was created by the high pass before. It's really just concentrated on a lot of the detail within the subject. So now we're going to pick an appropriate blend mode. Again, that's going to be linear light, vivid light, or overlay. Linear light is going to be the harshest. Vivid light is going to be somewhere in the middle. And overlay is going to be uh, the lightest effect. Soft light can work as well, but um, it just doesn't really do too much. So I'm going to select vivid light in this case. And you can really see how much texture is brought out. In fact, there's more texture being brought out than was brought out at the 10 pixel radius of the standard high pass. But at the same time, all of these areas around the eye here that looked really crunchy and just ugly, uh, that's not a problem anymore. It actually looks pretty good in those areas. Now, obviously, this is still way too sharp, um, but I'm just really making sure that you can see the sharpening effect. Uh, I would probably take this way down to like 50, 30%, whatever will end up looking good. Uh, so obviously, play with the opacity or play with a blend mode if you find that the effect is too much. So to demonstrate this again on an architecture image, uh, where we typically, you know, the issues that we have in landscapes and architecture images are again around the sky. So if we duplicated this and just let's quickly go into filter high pass i'm not going to bother with the contrast adjustment because i think you get the idea that we're trying to just show what problems get created so let's let's say we grab even a five pixel radius uh, you can see at five pixels it's already starting to create that fringe around the actual buildings and the sky and just you know not looking too good here so let's let's pick something in the middle uh, seven pixel radius we select that and change it to let's say overlay blend mode, um, you can kind of see that that fringe is already showing up. If we use vivid light here, that fringe becomes really noticeable. You can see the white transition between our sky and our building. And, you know, sure, we could mask that out and just, you know, focus on masking in the panels, but that's just a lot of work. And, you know, it, it's not just constrained to the outside areas here. There's inside areas here that will be way too crunchy as well that we just don't want to sharpen as much. So applying our action to this let's get rid of that we're going to go into our action there's two different actions there's the vsb sharpen 8-bit and the vsb sharpen 16-bit so just pick the appropriate one depending on what uh bit rate you're in but again i highly recommend being an 8-bit so that this doesn't take a century so grab the 8-bit one in our case here and um, again we're going to pick an appropriate threshold and radius so my threshold i'm going to probably pick uh, around let's say 10 pixels so that it doesn't create too much blurring between the sky and my building now obviously if you had a blue building uh, it would be you know it wouldn't would still blur this area out but at the same time if you had a blue building against the blue sky you shouldn't create the fringe so um, shouldn't be an issue anyways but uh, basically just kind of experiment with the threshold levels to find one that you know doesn't actually blur out the areas you don't want to create any sharpening on and similarly pick a radius that um, will essentially blur out the texture you want to sharpen. So in this case, I'm probably going to pick around 20 or so should be good. So once we select that, uh, the action will take care of the rest for us. So you don't have to go through the whole apply image step. It's all done automatically and uh, you're just left with the sharpening layer. So now if we toggle this on and off, we can see that it's bringing out a lot of that texture and detail in our image, but at the same time, it's not creating those ugly fringes around the outside of our building. So again, experiment with that, um, try it out at different radiuses, different thresholds, and um, also, you know, compare the results between the standard high pass and things like unsharp mask or smart sharpen, and you will see that it does give a, a different effect, and it's particularly good for bringing out, you know, smaller textures and details. So again, hope you found that useful. Uh, the link to the uh, action is going to pop up right here below. So click on that to download it. It's also in the description of this video. And also be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you don't miss any future updates. And follow us on Facebook at facebook.com slash vibrantshot. Bye for now.